This is one of multiple videos that help you troubleshoot CCNA scenarios in preparation for the CCNA exam. We've been told that PC1 on the left in this topology is unable to ping PC2. In this topology, I'm using GNS3 and Cisco IOS V routers as router one and router two and to mimic the PCs in the topology. And don't trust a user when they tell you something. As Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. We've been told that PC1 is not able to ping PC2 and we've verified that that's true. Notice we're getting a U in the output, which means that the traffic is being forwarded to a router and that router doesn't know what to do with the traffic. Now to ensure that traceroute runs quickly, I'll disable IP domain lookup and then we'll run a traceroute to PC2. Notice the traffic is getting to router one but is not going any further. So it looks like there's a problem on router one. On router one, show IP route. Show IP route shows us that the only routes in the routing table are directly connected networks and the local IP addresses on the router. Because this is a remote network, we need to run routing protocols on router one and router two to exchange routes. So router one needs to learn about network 10.1.3.0 from router two. So on router one, show IP protocols. Are we running a routing protocol? And the answer is yes, we are. We're running OSPF. OSPF is enabled in area zero on gigabit zero zero and in area one on gigabit zero one. So show IP OSPF neighbor. We don't have any neighbor relationships though. Show IP OSPF interface brief. OSPF is enabled on gigabit zero zero in area zero, and it's enabled on gigabit zero one in area one. So router one looks good. What about router two? Show IP protocols. We are running OSPF on router two, but can you spot the problem? You should be able to see it in the output of this command. To help you, show IP OSPF interface brief. Notice OSPF is not running on any interfaces on router two. Why is that? Look at this output. It's routing for networks 10.1.0.0, .0 .0, 0.0.0, 0.0.0, .0 .0 this means there's an exact match on the first three octets. In other words, OSPF is only running on network 10.1.0.0. Do we have any interfaces in that network? Show IP interface brief. No, we don't. We have an IP address configured as follows and one configured as follows. OSPF is not running on any interfaces on this router. Show run pipe section OSPF. That allows us to view the OSPF configuration. So OSPF has been configured, but notice the network command has been configured incorrectly. So router OSPF one, no network 10100. The command should be 10.1.0.0.0.255.255. Now you don't have to do it that way, but that's one of the options. Notice suddenly a neighbor relationship is established. Let's have a look at the output again. So show IP OSPF interface. Let's rather do a brief because that's too much output. Notice OSPF is now enabled on both interfaces of router two. Show IP protocols. This looks a lot better. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Neighbor relationship is established to router one. Show IP route. We have an inter-area route on router two to network 10.1.1.0. And on router one, show IP OSPF neighbor. We have a neighbor relationship 
to 10131 show IP route, we have learnt a route through OSPF. Now notice it's not an inter-area route. The route is in the routing table, but it's showing as an intra-area route, whereas this route is an inter-area route. Can PC1 ping PC2? Answer is yes. So this is a decision that you would need to make based on your design. Show IP protocols on router one shows us that OSPF has one interface, gigabit zero zero, in area zero, that's fine. This interface is in area one, whereas on router two, we have both interfaces in area zero. So the network works, but perhaps you wanna do it this way. So router OSPF one, network 10.1.2.0 and do it more explicitly. And then network 10.1.3.0. I'll show you the output in a moment if you weren't sure about what I was typing. So show run section OSPF. We have two network commands configured. This network is in area zero based on this command. And this network is in area two based on this command. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Neighbor relationship is established. We have an inter area route on router two. And on router one, we now see an inter area route 10130 slash 24. In other words, this network is in area zero. This is area two. And this is area one. It's important that you update your documentation and make sure that you configure your network correctly per the documentation. So. To confirm that, show IP protocols. This is correct, it's area zero. This is also correct, that's area one. Show IP protocols on router two. Output looks as follows. This network 10120 is in area zero, and this one is in area two. Now the reason why we have a difference in the output is notice the interfaces on router two don't have OSPF commands on them. We enabled OSPF in the routing process using the network command, whereas on router one, OSPF was enabled on the interfaces individually and not under the OSPF process. Both methods work in IP version four, in IP version six, you need to use this method to enable OSPF on individual interfaces. So that's an example of how to troubleshoot OSPF. Please comment on the video. Let me know if it was useful to you. Please also subscribe. Thanks for watching and all the very best.